My name is Rosemary Cubas and I've lived in this neighborhood for 32 years and I plan to live here for the rest of my life. I came here uh, 1971. Since then I've been living here and I'm planning to live till I die here. Where are you from Zinka? I am from Bosnia. Uh, my name is Milagros Velez Ardon. I'm 24 years old and my relationship to this street is that I used to live here since I was 8 years old until I was about 16 years old. Many years living here. This was my block. My name is Tata. I was um, raised all around here. This is uh, practically all my neighborhood. My father lived here. How many years ago? Wow, 40. Maybe more. What happened to your father uh, a couple of years ago? Um, he received a letter just from out of the blues. Yo, you gotta leave in 90 days. Just like that. About the takings uh -huh. of the homes. Well, Don Ramo, you know, he still comes over and talks with my dad because they stayed real good friends. And you know what? What he had said to me, and I, I saw letters also from the uh, Redevelopment Authority of Philadelphia. They basically had sent letters to everybody saying that they had to move, like out of nowhere, just one day out of the blue, everybody got a letter saying they had to move and they were only going to be offered $20,000 for their homes. This list is a list of urban renewal condemnations that happened in the spring of 2003. This is done by the Redevelopment Authority of the City of Philadelphia, and these are perhaps 2,000, close to 2,000 properties that were listed for taking. Um, many of the houses, most of the people whose homes were listed here did not understand that their houses were being taken. Were the other houses blighted? Were the other houses falling apart? No, all these houses were perfectly conditioned and to everybody just like was asked to move and um, there and then that's when the place started looking corrupted. It was well maintained and pretty and everything. There was like little benches. My one neighbor over here always had a little bench out there so that we could, you know, sit outside and she'd offer us iced tea. And it was very different. There was a, here it's empty right across the street, right in front of me, there was a clinic. Um, now it's empty. No, the clinic was in excellent condition. My father used to go there. I used to go there. And it was in tip top shape. It was, it was like new. And this is the name of the property, the address, and this is whether it's vacant or occupied. Vacant is not synonymous with destroyed or dangerous. These houses are occupied. Mostly this here, they'll live in over 25 years, which one I know, my neighbor. Over 25 years, everybody live here. So that's pretty much solid for me because they know me, I know them. If I need anything, they're gonna be there for me. If they, know, if they need anything, I will be there for them too. So I love this neighbor because I know them. But through years, I guess uh, something happened, I don't know what. And they try to, you know, demolishing houses, or whatever reason they have. So my neighbor, it's a little bit, they're moving out. People were getting letters in English. People on Bodine got their letters all in English. All of them were Spanish speaking. Some of them, in fact, were illiterate in both English and Spanish. Intelligent people, 
like the last remaining resident who lived on, on Bodine, who kept his house in excellent condition because he had all the building skills from the old country, from Puerto Rico. But he kept his letters in a, in a shoebox. He didn't know what they meant. And as far as he was concerned, he owned the house, he paid his taxes, his house was solid. Nobody was gonna take his house. And that is the problem. He liked where he lived and he was forced to move. And the way he got forced to move was that all his other neighbors were forced to move before him. This is a copy of uh, Philadelphia City Planning Commission light certification for a, a certain area of the city. Uh, this is an example of how it's done. You can see the people that are responsible, at least as of that time. And then what's important in this whole collection of pages is what the blight certification criteria are. And some of them are quite reasonable. Unsafe, unsanitary, inadequate, or overcrowded conditions, understandable. Inadequate planning, a little vague, especially for a city that's hundreds of years old. The last one is probably the most worrisome, and that's economically or socially undesirable land use. That means that if I think that I can make better use of your land, I can make a request, which I have right here. Property acquisition request form for NTI. And I can fill out my name, my organization, and any affiliation that I might have with city council, a private developer, uh, CDC or nonprofit, a city agency, and that I can say, um, after I state, I can say a brief description of my project uh, and the type of project that I want for your land. I can ask for your land and possibly get it because I may say that I can bring in more taxes. I don't have to prove it but I can say it. But this is the worrisome part, that together with this last item, in terms of blight criteria, the economically or socially undesirable land use. And economically undesirable means that if I'm paying $500, $600 worth of taxes, and the city figures that it can get 2000 $3,000, $4,000 worth of taxes for that property, which I own, have owned, have lived in, and raised my family in, they can take it. And what's going to come here? Why are they doing this? I'm not really sure. Well, I, I guess to make way for um, like There were rumors about a brick factory and replacing his uh, uh, I don't see anything. I don't they haven't really see anything. Heard I mean, I, from what I hear, what I see, money, money, like, they're just, just to get, probably want to make I mean, I'm not sure. Because we haven't seen nothing. Thank you.